Hey, good evening. As we call the meeting of our lower city council to order, I welcome you here today for Tuesday, March the 1st, 2022. We welcome you here this evening. And as we normally do, when we get started in a few minutes, we'll have our moment of silence and our pledge of allegiance before we go to that time. Uh, let's go ahead and do our roll call uh, <coughs> that we have here and we'll make sure who's with us. So we'll start with the uh, members here on the podium and I'll start with Mr. Presswood on my right. If you will go around. Yes, Ralph Prestwood here. Todd Purdue. Chrissy Thomas. David Stevens. Mike Perkins. Jonathan Beal. Scott Holbrand. TJ Rohr. Thank you. Shirley Cannon, our city clerk, is here. Uh, all right, let's go down the uh, list. Joshua Harris, our communication director, is here. Donna Bean. Chief's back here. Okay. Here. Okay. Thank you. Fire Chief Ken Hare. I'm here. Thank you. Economic Development Main Street, KON Horn. I'm here. Thank you. Police Chief Brent Phelps is with us this evening. Thank you, Chief. Parks and Recreation Director Kenny Story. I'm here. Thank you, sir. Public Utilities Director Radford Thomas. Here. Thank you. Our Planning Director Jenny Wheelock. I'm here. Thank you. And our Public Works Director Jared Wright. Yes, sir. I'm here. Well, thank you, sir. And by the way, we might as well, uh, since tonight is your final council meeting with us, we would like to uh, offer a very special thank you to Jared for his service with the city of Lenore. I know this is uh, your final week with us as you uh, go off on a new venture, and we wish you all the success in the world. Jared, thank you for all you've done for our city through not only public works, but uh, just your <laughs> The way you conduct yourself, the way you've uh, always been, we appreciate that very much. So thank you very much for uh, what you've meant for the city. We will miss you. Uh, we hope that we will. I know we will see you around other things, but uh, we, uh, we uh, uh, really enjoyed uh, working with you as our public works director. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's been an honor. Well, it's been an honor for us as well. So thank you for that. All right, we will uh, then let's go to our time now, a moment of silence in our pledge. As we go to that, I would like for you to keep the family of Stephen Stewart. Stephen serves on uh, a couple of our boards here in the city. Uh, he lost his mother this past week. So please keep Stephen and uh, Jamie and their family in your thoughts and prayers uh, as we move forward. So uh, at this time, let's please rise for a moment of silence and our Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Please salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And I would mention Candace Simmons is also with us tonight. Thank you, Candace, for being here from the Caldwell Free Press. <laughs> Thank you. On that, uh, would, before we get started, I would say, and, and Chief's coming up in just one second, uh, I would like to comment that, of course, as February has finished, I would like to comment, uh, compliment Joshua Harris and Candace and others who did a great job during the month of February with Black History Month. We had some, some wonderful articles uh, that were done, uh, a lot of uh, good things. Yes, sir. Also, Lester Whittington. Le Lester, yes. Uh, thanks, Lester, for all he does for... Uh, Black History Month as well. A lot of things couldn't be live like we normally do, and we hate that, but hopefully we'll be back with that uh, soon, and we'll look forward to maybe this summer doing some things. We do have some other events planned uh, in June and, and several things that we may get to celebrate, but we honored uh, a lot of people, a lot of firsts that Joshua did, our first council member, our, our first uh, uh, female council member, and a lot of other things that uh, that were done. So we have great articles that you did. So 
Josh? Yeah, I'll just reiterate what uh, Mr. Hildebrand said, that the idea came from Lester Whittington at MLK. So, I mean, he had all the records and he had all the info. So he just asked me if I could help put it out there, and I said, that's what I do. So. Yeah, you did. You did a great job. Uh, thank you, and thanks to Lester, <laughs> and, we'll, and we'll make sure that we pass that along to him. So great job was done. Well, hopefully we can do more. Okay, I'll now uh, bring uh, Chief Phelps up, and we'll talk about our 2021 annual report from our fine police department. Hello, everybody. Hope uh, the uh, Tuesday at this point in the week is going okay. Good. Mm -hmm. uh, not been too bad for us. We're one day closer to Friday, but uh, we got through Monday. Um, I'm going to go through slides. Your The annual report is in your packet. I, I won't be going through that line for line. Uh, if, as you review that, and if you have specific questions about something I don't cover tonight, email uh, me, give me a call, uh, and be more than happy to answer those questions at a later date. I, as I went through it, me and the leadership team, we looked at certain things where we saw differences, and, uh, and so I'll explain some of those, go over some of those, uh, try not to take up too much of your time. Just to jog your memory as a council, back in 2018, the department was switching from the UCR reporting criteria to the NIBRS reporting criteria, which is the National Incident-Based Reporting System. Uh, we were completely switched over in December of 2018. So 2019 was our first full year under that new national reporting system. So last year in 2020, I didn't compare 19 and 20. One, we had uh, a brand new year of data from 2019. And then as I'll, I'll mention here in a minute, you know, 2020 numbers were completely different. Uh, and so I'll explain some of that. But just to remember, you know, a, as we talk about some of that, 2019 is kind of now our new baseline uh, under this reporting system. Pretty much just covered all of that. One of the things that I did in in the powerpoints was as I looked at the as I looked at the data, you had 2019 the the numbers, and then when we looked at 2020, <coughs> everything dropped through the floor. Obviously, uh, our country was in shutdown, our communities were in shutdown, and so the majority of everything really dropped off in 2020. And so in trying to compare all three years, it made it real hard because it didn't feel like you were comparing apples to apples with 2019 data, which is kind of the baseline 2020 and then 2021. So what, what we did, you'll see the information in here, but we tried to compare 2021 and 2019. Uh, those numbers seemed more comparable. There were some, some differences in, in different categories, and we'll talk about some of those. But when I talk about the decreases or the increases in certain areas, just for comparing numbers, I'm talking about year 2019 and year 2021. Okay. Uh, I know that's uh, about as confusing as running in, in mud. I think about but, every uh, business has had to yeah. do that. It, it, <laughs> it, you know, as we looked at it, it was just... <clears throat> It, 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 I could have had some really great numbers last year. I could have talked about how we reduced crime in 2020 and we had things way lower. And, 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 and yeah. Um, and then this year, I would have had to talk about how everything is, has really increased. But actually, when you look at 19 and 21, they're, they're okay. fairly consistent. Moving into that, uh, in our crimes against persons, uh, we actually had 9% fewer from 2019 to 2021. So there was a, a slight reduction there in, in that category. Sadly, uh, we did have an increase in our homicides. Uh, in uh, the last couple of years, we'd had zero homicides. Uh, unfortunately, in 2021, we had uh, two very tragic incidents that were domestic related uh, that uh, some folks' lives uh, were taken by somebody else. Um, our crimes against society, uh, there was a 21% reduction. But when you look at that category, there was one line item 
that there was an increase. And in that line item, it was the weapons law violations. And, and we saw a little bit of a spike in that. Um, and that's discharging a firearm, carrying a concealed weapon, um, things along those lines. And we saw an increase in that area. In your crimes against property, there was a 13% reduction from 2019 to 2021. However, in the three property, three of the property line items, specifically larceny, there was an increase. Um, the one where it's just a generic larceny, there was a 24% increase. Uh, larceny from motor vehicles, uh, where somebody breaks into a car, steals something out of a car. And then the larcenies where they're stealing something off the car. They're taking batteries, they're taking catalytic converters, they're taking wheels and tires, <coughs> things like that. Um, that there, were, there was an increase. In, in looking at uh, some of this data, I, I talked to several different chiefs that I know, and the majority of everybody experienced increases kind of in the same areas we experienced. Uh, the, the chief of Gastonia, uh, he, you know, we were talking about our crimes against person and, you know, and, and he said his homicides had doubled. Uh, they, they were at 13 and they only run six or seven a year. And, and so where we're not happy about some of the increases, uh, it, it feels like it's consistent to where we are in, in the state and in America. Uh, some other things to look at, our calls for service. Uh, we did have an increase in our animal complaints. Uh, we we had a, uh, an increase in our civil disturbances, and that's that can can encompass a lot of different things. Neighbors being upset, uh, somebody getting close to fighting, but they're not physically fighting, yelling back and forth, things like that. And then our domestics uh, increased as well. We, we had so many more people that were at home. That's yeah. yeah. In 2020, we felt like our domestics were going up, and as we begin to look at the data, we could tell they were. Um, and they've kind of stayed, they've dropped a little in 21, um, but, but not a lot, pretty consistent. And, but in 20, they were home and they all stayed the time. there. Yep. Yeah. We, we had, it felt like we had a lot more calls of things that, you know, one people being confined and then things, uh, where people called to complain about things that, that were very visual and, uh, I, I remember having a few conversations uh, with a couple individuals and they said, well, when I was at work all the time, I didn't realize <coughs> this, but now that I'm home all day, you know, there, there's this issue with traffic or there's this issue. And so I think some of that plays into, into that. The next two categories, I wish I could tell you I have an answer for, uh, but I don't. Uh, our involuntary commitments almost doubled. Uh, we typically will run anywhere from 80 to 100 commitments a year, and in in 21 we had 184. Um, the only I, I I don't know that I can quantify it or 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 give a specific reason. Um, other places are seeing increases there. Uh, we do have some services here in our community that we didn't have before. And, you know, you could make an argument that, you know, people are reaching out to that resource that used to not be present. Um, and, and that may factor into some of it. Um, the next one is, is a com another one of those community problems that law enforcement has a small piece of, uh, but it's, it's very disturbing. Uh, and that's in our overdoses. Uh, our overdoses went up 73% uh, in, uh, in there. Our opiate-induced overdoses I increased. Um, we used Narcan 55 times last year and, and saved 54 individuals. But, you know, um, that may go back to what Mr. Purdue had to say over there with the confinements <coughs> at home. There, I don't have the answer to it. I, I told another chief that I was talking to, I said, you know, if I, if I knew how to fix this or the answer to it, I could probably retire from the police department, go across the country and teach it and, and, uh, and it'd be very lucrative. Uh, but it is an issue. Uh, and I think there are a lot of different factors that, that factor into that. Uh, it's sad, uh, for both of these, when, when a family 
is that the place to where they're needing to commit a family member? Um, you know, their whole world kind of stops, and they are they are grasping at straws and reach. They've hit that place to where, you know, they don't have any other options than to try to get this individual help, and, and those are hard. And the the thing that scares me with the overdoses is is the level of addiction that that a lot of these individuals have. You know, when you think about an officer arrives. Uh, there's an individual not breathing, uh, heart not pumping, and we use Narcan. They they come back to life. Medical folks get there, check them out, and all they want to do is sign the form so they can go and continue the activity they were doing before we got there. Um, it, it it's it's very disturbing to think their level of addiction is at that place. Um, that 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 is where they are and you know for law enforcement there are things we can do and there's things we're trying to work on to assist but you know if they've almost just died the threat of well you know we're going to put you in jail doesn't matter um and so you know it's got to the answer there is is more complex than just you know it, it is a, a community problem for sure uh, just some other numbers in our criminal charges. Uh, we in felony misdemeanor we had uh, 2871. Uh, these numbers uh, we get out of the numbers that we report to the ABC Commission. Uh, our total drug charges, our total alcohol violations, uh, our traffic crashes. We had zero fatalities this year. That we're always proud of that. Uh, there was a, a slight bump. One of the things is. You know, when we look at our, our crashes and where those occur, typically we have the most accidents from about the crossroads to about Excella. And, and that's year after year in, in that area. Well, that's that's our most dense area. We have our most vehicle traffic in that area. We have our most businesses where people are turning in and turning out. Um, and so uh, you will, uh, as I tell people that are traveling through Lenore, I tell them, you know, uh, we do a lot of enforcement on 321 before the crossroads and coming south before uh, that area with Blue Ridge and Excella because our, our thought is in looking at the data, if that's where we're having our most crashes, if we can slow people down before they get in that congested area, then we can hopefully eliminate some accidents or at least keep the accidents from being as severe. Um, and uh, so when you see guys out on 321, you know, it's not that, you know, we just didn't have anything else to do. It's it's specific. We typically uh, only go into neighborhoods when we get complaints. Uh, and, and that happens. We'll get complaints. Uh, a lot of times what ends up happening is when we get a, com a speeding complaint in a small neighborhood, we end up writing everybody from the neighborhood. And, you know, folks think everybody's flying through here and needs to stop. And then, you know, sometimes we end up writing tickets to the people that called uh, and uh, because they're the folks that travel that neighborhood the most and uh, but uh, we uh, try to do increased visibility for a little bit before we you know really crack down on the enforcement but uh, some other numbers in our investigations unit with recovered property uh, those are in the report uh, our communication center uh, over 38,000 uh, process CAD calls with some of the changes in our communication center, uh, we don't have the ability to pull our exact 911 numbers anymore uh, due to some of that technology. And we're, we're working through that. That still comes through the county's primary PSAP and then is routed to us uh, for right now. Our patrol division, we had over 22,000 uh, police service calls. Uh, we performed over 9,000 special and house checks and then over 759 uh, call follow-ups. Our investigations division, those are criminal cases, search warrants, consent searches. Um, we had 136 uh, nuisance cases. Uh, that's a little lower number than, uh, than in years past. We're, uh, some things we're, we're improving on and we've reported that. Um, a few of the cases this past year uh, were a little more intense cases uh, that took a little more time than, than a, a, a simple grass case where you go out, you take a picture, you send them a letter, they cut the grass, and you can close it out. Um, but uh, we're 
that as we talked about at the retreat, that's a focus and, and we're, uh, we're making headway in, in that area. Our police activity, you'll see this in, uh, in our report. Uh, we, we put that out there publicly. Uh, that's our enforcement by race. Um, you know, from time to time, I get a few questions. I think it helps that, that, that we make it public and put it on the website and, uh, and, and put it out there with 10 plus years ago, law enforcement had to report to the state. Um, they had to do a traffic stop report for every traffic stop. And that data is collected on every traffic stop and sent to the, to the state. Uh, and, and have done that since that started. And so some of those numbers come from there. Uh, but when you look at those numbers and those categories, they're, they're fairly close uh, to, uh, to our demographics or our community. Um, with specifically the, the use of force, when, when you think about use of force, that is those numbers. There's a couple things that comprise of that. We had 46 last year. Out of that 46, not all of those are exactly what you would think of as, as force. You know, one of the things we document and have for a long time is anytime we point a weapon at somebody, that's a use of force. So if, you know, Mr. Bill is holding a baseball bat, I pull my weapon out, I, I give him commands, he puts it down, turns around, I holster my weapon, I handcuff him, I still have to document that use of force. So some of those type things are in those numbers as well. When you, you think about that one, that is us responding to somebody's actions. Uh, if, if we are having to use force, they've failed to comply uh, with commands or our direction, <coughs> and, and we are being responsive or reactive to, to their actions. The, the other thing to think about is the 26 Zero fifty. That is every citizen contact that we can document on paper. All our incident reports, all our calls for service, all our off-duty, everything that we can put in a number to say we had a contact with a citizen, we know was slightly over 26,000. Now, there's a lot more than that. Think about the high school football games at High Brighton. Mm -hmm. There are six or eight officers there. There's 2,000 people there. We count that if, if there's six officers, we count that as six. Now, those six officers may have had, you know, 300, 400 citizen contacts during that event. So we know that number is, is low, but that's the ones we can show on paper. These are the citizen contacts. And so when you think about out of all of those citizen contacts, there were 46 incidents where we were, we were not able to get people to do what we asked them to do or told them to do or instructed them to do, and we had to use some type of force. Uh, and that number's extremely low. Um, uh, just some of the other things, I'll go through these quick. We started last year with the company Extra Duty Solutions. We had a full year of that. Uh, that switching over to that where they manage that. If, there's a local number. If somebody needs an off-duty officer to work at an event, they call that. There's a manager there that works out the details. They have our policy. It's, it's our program. They schedule it. It's all automated. Um, officers get paid. There's some insurance uh, in the event that you know, an, an officer opens a car door and hits a car beside him. There's some insurance to help cover that. Uh, it puts all the officer stuff in one place. In talking to the, some of the vendors that use off-duty on a regular basis, uh, one of them, uh, when I was talking to him, he said, so you're telling me all I have to do is write one check and this company keeps up with all the taxes for all the different officers? I said, yep. He said, sign me up. Yeah. I, he said, I may be able to reduce some of her hours. Um, and so we've had a pretty good success. You know, people don't like change. You know, there's been a few calls where somebody, you know, says, how do I do that? Oh, that's not the way it used to be. But once we talk through it, it's, it, it's worked pretty well. Uh, it's been interesting. We hosted a meeting about a year and a half ago to PD and guys from Hickory, Morganton and some other places came to, to, to hear. And, uh, we kind of got on first and, 
uh, now those guys have been calling us, hey, how's that going? We're thinking about doing that too. And so, uh, you know, sometimes it's nice when when you're the first and they have to call you because a lot of times we end up calling them. But uh, it, it's worked well. Some other stats, hit those quickly, <coughs> just our ABC permits, our backgrounds, our polygraphs. Uh, I was meeting with uh, a reporter today, and she said, polygraphs, what's that? Those are typically our applicants. When we're, when we're doing an applicant uh, for hire, that's toward the end of that process. Um, and then just some of our other our Crime Stoppers numbers, our evidence numbers, um, and then uh, our collected medications and, and different things. We had, we've talked about this at the retreat. Uh, I'll hit it quickly. We had some retirements this past year, um, a couple of them uh, that we were anticipating, a couple that we weren't. Um, our C platoon, which is our traffic and in our schools, we had a lot of movement. Not all of them were new uh, in our schools, but some of them moved schools. Uh, the officer at the middle school went to the high school. The, uh, and so there was a lot of movement in, uh, in, in the schools there. Uh, we've talked about the secession planning. Uh, we're, uh, as as I hear guys uh, that have gray hair like myself at, at the office, um, talk about you know I have this many months, I have this many months. Uh, you know we're Sergeant Moore just retired. Uh, we're uh, we're we're looking in uh, trying to uh, plan ahead. The part of that that is scary is. We know there's fewer people coming into the profession, uh, and we know there's a group uh, of senior leadership that in the next several years that are going to be leaving. And so, you know, one focusing on those mid level supervisors that we have to prepare them, uh, uh, we feel like is really important, and then continuing to, you know, be able to, uh, to work to recruit uh, those new folks. Because, uh, you know, we, we need good people as much now as we ever have. A uh, couple other highlights, and I'm done. And take questions. Uh, we are hopefully reaching toward the end of our risk assessment with the league. <clears throat> we started that a couple years ago. It kind of got put on hold, hold with the pandemic. Uh, we have submitted all of our policies for them to review, and they're in the process of going into our <coughs> system and reviewing the po policies and making sure that that our policies fit uh, with. Uh, the risk assessment. Uh, once that's completed, then uh, uh, the individuals that uh, run that program for the league, uh, they will come and make a presentation typically uh, to council uh, on behalf that the department has met uh, that requirement and is functioning uh, at, at that level. Uh, there's also a, a reduction in our insurance cost. I can't remember the percentage, but you know, if you complete that uh, risk review and, and keep it up to date, then uh, it, then there's a, a benefit as, of that as well. Uh, some of the other policies as a part of that and just in our reviewing of policy are, are at the bottom. Uh, policy is always changing. Uh, you know, we, we had a pretty significant law change uh, in October, December with uh, SB 300 and so we had to go in and, and create some policy and tweak some policies that we already had existing because of those law changes. Accomplishments, some of our building stuff, our fitness room, we upgraded a few pieces of equipment, um, replaced the back door, I know I showed pictures of that at the retreat, some flooring, uh, some new uh, backup phone systems and communications. Uh, we've uh, we're almost at the end of the firing range. We've done a lot of improvements up there, much needed. Uh, we continue to replace ballistic vests for our patrol officers on a yearly basis. We use some grant funding to help with that. And uh, then <coughs> you, <coughs> excuse me. you may have seen the electronic signs. We have two of those. Uh, they collect data force, uh, which is very helpful. And... Uh, you know, they will flash the speed limit and I think say slow down and there's a few, you can put some different text in there <coughs> when it hits that. Uh, and they're more mobile. Uh, and so they're a little easier to move around and when we get complaints, uh, one, we can capture data and, uh, and put that out. And then that, the last picture was the, the new car design that, that came out after the first of the year. Um, and questions. 
that you guys have uh, currently this evening. Yes, sir. Are all your officers trained to administer Norcan, and if not, uh, what are your plans to get we, them qualified? That, that's a good question. We, we do for the last probably four to five years, once we started um, receiving it, uh, we put policy in place. Uh, chief Brown was the chief then, and we put policy in place on it being administered. We, for us to give it to an officer, we have to give them training uh, on that, and depending on which type of device, because there's a couple different uh, types of devices, but all of them uh, have training on it and, uh, and, and know how to use it. Yeah. <clears throat> it's important for a couple reasons, one for our community, but also for our officers. If our officers are out and they get exposed to something and were to have a reaction, uh, it's good to have that on hand. We may, we've not had to, knock on wood, uh, but you know some places have where they've had to administer that on, on an officer or a fireman or, or an EMS. Um, we have been getting it uh, through the North Carolina uh, Harm Reduction Coalition. Uh, that may not be completely right uh, through some grants and not we've not had to pay for it. Um, those days are probably coming to an end. And so uh, we uh, we are probably in the next couple of years going to have to begin to uh, to fund a little bit of that to, to purchase some of it. We've been getting some from emergency management here in just the last little bit. Um, but we're probably end up going to what I'm being told is to get it. Uh, we'll probably be going in with emergency management and, you know, as they're ordering large amounts, then we're, we're getting some from them. But Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Chief, with, uh, <clears throat> sorry, you mentioned you're replacing some of the vest uh, mm -hmm. for the human officers. Yeah. Tell us about the canine officers as well. We, uh, we have some of those. Those have been uh, private funded. Uh, there's a very small window where you can use those in an effective manner. They're, they're heavy. In the summertime, they're extremely hot on the animal. And, uh, and so uh, they're, they're, they're expensive, and, and we've had some funding to, to get those, and we've been very fortunate with it. Um, but it, it's one of those things that the, the ability to use it is, is just – in small areas so it's uh, typical that you would probably use the vest when you know you're going to be yes. entering in a house and you have prior yeah. knowledge of, okay typically um, some type of maybe a search warrant or some type of elevated situation right. where there's there's a high threat of of gunfire yep. well and i know our our canines do a lot to protect our officers they do and reduce the risk in mm -hmm. situations so yeah uh, thank you very much yes sir any other questions any other questions for Chief Phelps? Good report. Thank you Thank very you. much. We appreciate that. Appreciate all that you do every day to keep us safe. Look forward to good things continuing to go forward on that. Uh, and a minute, I need to back up just a minute. I forgot that uh, Council Member Kent Greer is not with us tonight. I don't know that he is on Zoom. If he is, I'm yeah. one to recognize that uh, he is with us. That I failed to do that when we were doing the roll call a bit ago. But Council Member Greer, I hope you're with us, and thank you for being on Zoom tonight. I'm here. Thank you. Okay. Very good. All right. We'll move on then to um, uh, we don't have matters scheduled for public hearing this evening, so we'll move to our consent agenda items consisting of the minutes of the City Council meeting Tuesday, February 15th, 2022. The minutes of the uh, closed session minutes of the council meeting, February 15th, uh, 2022. These have been reviewed by the city attorney, the city council, and the <coughs> city manager. Item C are the minutes of the committee, the whole meeting of February 22nd, 2022 as submitted. Item D is an authorizing resolution. This is with Mattern and Craig. Uh, the resolution authorizing the city manager in, to enter into a consulting agreement with Mattern and Craig Incorporated for temporary administrative and management services assistance as submitted. Item E is the final change order number one and close out of construction contract. This is for Hotel Street Extension Project, and this is for approving the final adjusting change order 
uh, number one and moving forward with the closeout of the construction contract for the Hotel Street Extension Project. Please note that this uh, action uh, only refers to closeout of the construction contract. The project budget ordinance will remain active until pending right of way acquisitions are completed. And item F is the uh, final offer to purchase real property. This is for the Park View subdivision. Uh, this would be uh, approval of submission of the of the no upset bids, as submitted by the Wild Winds Farms Incorporated to purchase the nine lots owned by the city of Lenore located in Parkview subdivision, which are partial numbers are 09148222121223 225 229 269 210 234 and 247 as submitted. So those are the items A through F for the consent agenda. So I'll open it up for any discussion uh, and or motion on those. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, pull item number, item D, for clarification for me. Okay. Item D, we'll pull out just for a few minutes and we'll discuss that in a minute. Anything else on A, B, C, E, or F? With that pull, I'd like to make a motion that we will accept items A, B, C, D, item A, B. <laughs> a, B, C, E, and F. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, we have a motion for Councilmember Perkins to approve <clears throat> Consent agenda items A, B, C, E, and F as presented. If no other discussion, I'll call for the question. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. And on the uh, Zoom, Mr. Greer? Aye. Thank you. And all opposed? Thank you. That carries <laughs> unanimously. We appreciate that. Now, we'll open up the discussion on item D for Mr. Perkins. What would you, what's your question? I don't understand what it is, matter or... Uh, Mater and, and Craig Incorporated approval of a resolution also around the city manager to enter into a consultative agreement. Well, in a few minutes, that. we're going to introduce you to that, what that is, but uh, <laughs> okay. Mr. Uh, Elderbrand. Well, that's uh, fine if we're going to do it later. Yeah. That's fine. Well, go ahead and, and well, if uh, you will. We, um, with the departure of um, Public Works Director Jared Wright, we're trying to get some additional assistance during that interim period. Uh, Bradford Thomas, Public Utilities Director, is going to go back and assist, but also we need some additional assistance to get projects moving forward. Uh -huh. And so we're contracting with Matt and Craig and Ed Evans, who's here this evening, to go back and fill in that gap for three days a week until uh, we get someone hired. Oh, okay. He'll be, uh, they'll be working for us as uh, the interim Public Works Director, through <coughs> okay. Matt and Craig, right. who he works for. Okay. I think you told me that. We brought that yeah. up at the last uh, Give me the whole county. Committee of the whole. Committee of the whole. Committee of the whole. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to reinsert. It. Okay, we have a motion from Council Member Person that Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> but Council Member Person, Council Member Perkins, that we uh, uh, bring item D, the authorizing resolution with Matter and Craig, for this agreement as presented uh, for your consideration. So, uh, if there's no other discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And Mr. Greer? Aye. Thank you, sir. And that is, is unanimous. Thank you. And at this time, we'll introduce uh, uh, Mr. Ed Evans. Ed is the uh, former manager of Bo the town of Boyne Rock, uh, as well as Beach Mountain, Seven Devils, among a few others. Interim time in North Wilkesboro, I think, at, at that, and several other things. And Ed is out with the Mattern and Craig firm, and he has agreed uh, through this contract to be uh, work with us as an interim for our uh, public works directorship while we're in the process of hiring uh, a new one. We need some leadership there with uh, Radford Thomas, also our public utilities director as well. They'll be working together uh, for that department. So Ed, welcome. Thank you for, uh, to, for agreeing to work with us. We've known you for a time and uh, always had great uh, uh, relationships with you and we appreciate you willing to do that. Thank you. Thank you for being with us tonight, by the way. All right, we'll move on then. Uh, this is a time on our uh, uh, agenda for a request and petitions of any citizens. If there's anyone who would like to address the council, we don't have anyone here in the audience other than staff and newspaper and other things, but uh, if there's anyone who'd like to address us, uh, even on uh, Zoom. Okay, not hearing any, we'll move on. No reports tonight from our boards and commissions. So we'll move on to the report and recommendations of our city manager, Mr. Hildebrand. Well, Mr. Mayor, council, a couple items for information this evening. The um, Caldwell, 
County Economic Development Commission will meet on Tuesday, March 8th, 8 a.m., and that will be in person meeting. I think it's going to be held at the uh, community college. No, it's going to be held at the Civic Center. The uh, Lenore Business Advisory Board will meet on Thursday, March 17th. Uh, it's originally scheduled for the 10th, but that's the Main Street Conference week, so they'll be meeting on the 17th at 6 p.m. The ABC Board will meet on March 10th at 2 p.m., and that's going to be a Zoom meeting. The uh, City County Services Committee will meet on Monday, March 14th at noon, and I think that's at the Civic Center. Also, the National League of Cities Congressional City Conference will be held in Washington, D.C. On, Mon on Sunday and Monday, but March 14th through the 16th. Uh, Council Member Bill will be leading that delegation along with City Attorney Rohr and myself. Um, and with that, that's, that's all I have unless you have questions. Do, you, do we need to appoint any voting delegates or will we do that at our next meeting? Or Probably since Mr. Bill's the only one going selected, we'll probably let him be the, the person uh, to also, vote. I don't think there's any votes at this. If there's not a, I okay. think, yeah, yeah, I think they've gone back and pushed okay. it all to the annual conference. Okay. If, if there is, you can handle that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll. Thank you. Not okay. Your phone. Yeah. Any other uh, <clears throat> comments or questions for Mr. Hildebrand concerning his report? All right. We'll move on then to um, a report and recommendation. Our city attorney, Mr. Rohr. Nothing to report. Thank you, sir. And from the uh, mayor's office, uh, we'll continue to announce we do have a planning board vacancy uh, that uh, exists. As we knew our new council member, Kent Greer, was a member of our planning board. And it's now uh, moved up to our, or moved to their city council. I won't say up. I'll just say he's moved to our city council, and we're glad to have him uh, with us. So there is a seat open there on our planning board. So we'll be uh, 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 advertising for that, and we have, have been <coughs> already. So we'll be waiting to see if we have some interest there, and, uh, and looking at some uh, applications and that kind of thing there on that. Uh, I think that was all that I had coming out of that. I think all our other boards are. Uh, right now in pretty good shape uh, we're working on you know getting the dates all changed and i know that's moving along very well so that we are, we're appointing on a uh, once a year type basis for our boards trying to make it more consistent we appreciate the work that's going on there all right any report from any of our council members well west caldwell uh they're not in the city but they're part of our county is in the third round of the playoffs tonight up in us uh, at surrey county so we're wishing them well so yeah. if they win tonight they'll have one more game and then they'll be going on to the state so uh that hasn't been done so they're in the so boys. Boys. boys boys west caldwell boys. boys so that had been done since 1986 when we won two years in a row so we're hoping we're pushing them to Represent the call county. You like, like to remember that with I us. Do. I do. <laughs> we, we need somebody to 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 to, to uh, win so we can have that to talk about. There you go. Yeah, you so, need to pass the buck to the, right. uh, the next uh, the next group. For that. Pass it on. Well, we wish West we Caldwell should. very good luck. How, how did High Brighton do with their? We, uh, we finished first round. We got uh, the uh, the girls went to second round. Okay. And the boys we lost the first round. The okay. Boys lost to first the round. Yeah. Well, that's that's good. I know yeah. they had some great seasons, and yeah. we appreciate. It. And I know your son was part of the, the team and yeah. congratulations to him uh, for I know a successful season. And Kenny with, uh, Story's daughter on the women's team. That's right. Story's Ken, Kenny and uh, yeah. Mr. Story's daughter was yeah. on the uh, team. women's team and, and uh, she can she can play. She I tell you that. She <laughs> has a contract with the news topic. <laughs> <laughs> she, must, <laughs> she must have. She they they, they, they like to watch her shoot. That's for sure. They certainly <laughs> catch her in action. Uh, well, congratulations to all of our our local teams um, uh, as they move forward. And we wish the best for West Caldwell and as they move. Hopefully they'll get by another round and yeah. see where, where they go from there. That would be fantastic. So, so anything else to come before us? A lot of things are moving forward, so we'll continue to uh, keep you posted on that as we, uh, as we work forward. But if there's nothing else to come before us tonight, we stand adjourned. <laughs>